I uh, washed the Jeep this morning. This stuff should be just about dry. So let's get this out of the way. Also did some planting. You guys can check that out while I'm cleaning this up. Just the day-to-day. -day. If you guys want to see more of my day-to-day, -day, not my toenails, um, let me know in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to include my day-to-day -day for you guys. Fish heads, welcome back to another spray session here at Jekyll Bates. We're over at the spray bench. I've got this really cool cicada popper. Let's make something cool today. I haven't done anything to this except for tape off the popper section of it, which is a little bit tricky. You kind of have to wrap tape around and uh, I do one side at a time and then I split the tape and curve it over. So that's how I do it. It's, uh, it's got that foiling holographic uh, little s insert on both sides of it. So I want to try and use that to the best of my advantage. Now I'm going to loosely base this pattern off of this guy, this, this guy up here, right there. Uh, <clears throat> we're not going to stay exactly on that. Uh, this does have 3D eye inserts, so it's got eye sockets on it. But we're going to stay real simple. What I'd like to do, because I've never done one of these before, I don't know why, I just never have. This was a gift from uh, Crossroad Tackle. And thank you, Tim. So I figured since I had it, we could do a little small waters deal on it. I'm going to paint the underside of this. Yeah, I was gardening, sorry. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, paint the underside of this. I'm going to paint it a reddish brown. We're going to try and stay close to match the hatch. We're not going to get all crazy in our colors and patterns. Um, this is a lighter color, very transparent. The wings, how do you pull that off, you're asking? I have no idea. Let's do it together. Um, but we're going to start out, I think, with some detail burnt sienna. I actually have a little bit left in here that I need to use up. It should be okay to go. Uh, and a little bit of red. And then like a super, super reduced, I'm going to have to reduce either peach or maybe even um, maybe this. This is a Driscoll tone. It's like a flesh tone. So let's, let's see how this evolves. I've got my pressure way too high. We're going to be using 15 PSI. So all I'm doing here is just lightly filling in the body on the underside. I'm leaving that as transparent as I can. I'm going to heat set in between because again I don't want the red overtaking this burnt sienna. Um, you're not seeing a whole lot going on up here in the body. So I might go ahead and come through just finish this completely off because we want the wings to look transparent and the only way I really know how to achieve that is through working on the bottom of this lure. I'm now using a sand color but if you can notice I've got a mix going on. It's the sand, it's the actual Createx sand color and I've added to it a little bit of transparent illustration white. It's a lot thinner. Illustration is much, much thinner paint. So to that, I'm going to stay as light as I can and just get this head segment. Angling is everything. So if you approach this and you're angling your airbrush down this bait, you're going to get less splatter on the wing segments. Remember, we're trying to avoid the wing segments. We want to leave those as transparent as possible. 
I'm going to come in real close since I have a low pressure and I'm just going to ease this trigger back and just run this down the edge just like that. Now Arkansas is one of the few states in the country right now that has not imposed a statewide or municipality-wide um, lockdown. We are not under shelter-in-place, stay-at-home orders. Now they have closed non-essential businesses, they have closed restaurants, they've closed pretty much everything except for grocery stores, retail outlets that sell groceries, um, food, Restaurants are offering takeout services, but no dine-in, obviously, that's nationwide. Um, it was a very surreal scene when I went to my local local uh, grocery store, because everybody's wearing masks. Uh, there's queue lines to get in and out of buildings, like it were, like it's Black Friday. So it's, it's an oddly bizarre scene, walking in town. There's hardly any cars on the highway, so people are definitely taking heed to the precautions. Now because these wings are transparent, the only way that I know to properly represent them is to add just a little bit of shading to it. We're not going to do much. Uh, I want to keep these as transparent as possible. And basically they would represent and take on whatever color is underneath of them, which would normally be either the body of the cicada or it's another lawn service. Hey folks, it's lawn cutting day. Um, it would either be the, the body of the cicada or whatever surface when the cicada lands, it, it's underneath. So it's generally going to be a little bit darker. So what I'm going to do here, um, I'm just going to grab a random piece and just kind of work my way down this segment. And then bring it around because it's sort of a round head. And now we have a little bit more form to this. And then flip this, do the same thing on the other side where we'll just follow this down. And then bring it around so that we can see that segment in there. And now what we've done, we've done a couple of different things. We've left it transparent, but we've also better defined the body of this cicada. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to come back and color the back end just a little bit because if you notice, the wings are pretty much the entire bait on its back. Just a little bit. And then we're going to darken on this underside. We're going to come back and darken just down the edges. This is where control comes in. Now you can see there's segments here as well. I'm thinking of adding those in. If we can pull it off, I might actually add them in with a lighter shade, although white has a tendency to spatter. Let me um let me do this and just see how it looks. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. So all I'm doing here, folks, is I'm taking this little segment that I have, it's a hand cut stencil, and I'm defining the body segments on this cicada. And our pressure is super, super, super low. And we're going to keep wiping this down. I might even bring that a little bit lower. There we go. Now we have some fairly well-defined body segments. I'm going to add just a little bit of real thin opaque white. It 
to that. Just a drop of fluorescent green. A drop, maybe two drops of pearl lime. Let's see how that looks. So we don't want it yellow. And that's the trouble with pearl lime is it has a tendency to really make it yellow, although that looks pretty decent. I'm gonna grab just a little piece of cardboard and I'm gonna cut out two very small triangles because if you're playing along with the picture, you can see that there are couple of triangles on this. Some of them are small. Some of them are a little bit bigger. And that should be pretty decent. Okay. Now, if you're noticing, the triangles are darker green than the wings, the, the detailing on the wings. And I mixed this particular batch of green to be part of the detailing on the wings. So I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna grab, I hope this is not too dark. We're gonna test to see what kind of color we're getting off this first. So along these ridges, the points are towards the head, so we're going to be bringing that in line. Let's see here. I'll do one on this side, one on this side. couple of smaller ones. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of green to the nose. I want to come back to my burnt sienna because I want to add a little bit of modeling. Now you're not gonna see that when I say modeling, not model like model train or model car, modeled like, like almost like a stippling. And it's M-O-T-T, -T, not M-O-D. So coming back to this color, I'm gonna take this creature feature and I'm just gonna gently place this, do some mottling on the sides. And yeah, I, again, remember I said that this was gonna be loosely based. And then come down. Just like that. Before we get into the detailing on the wings, I'm not, super happy with how the segments came out. The It kind of disappeared. So I'm going to go ahead because the, the sepia, this, um, I'm sorry, the burnt sienna is a little bit dark to kind of have a definition. So I'm going to come back. That's too much. Lower the pressure. Always spray onto something before you're spraying onto the segment here. Pardon the airplane. That might better define it.
kids next door are washing their dad's car. It's pretty awesome. And yes, you guys are going to hear some background noise. I apologize for that, but, you know, it would be here if I wasn't recording. It's just the day-to-day -day stuff that goes on. It's actually a very quiet neighborhood. Um, in the summer, there's some kids that are out, but we've got, we've got a really good neighborhood. I'm excited about that. So what I'm doing now, and what you guys are going to see, is that I'm going to paint white first. And we're going to be using that... Um, picture I'm going to stabilize my hand with my other hand while I'm doing this and all I'm going to be doing is just tracing where this lure and it's not going to be exact or precise the wing segments we're going to try and follow the lines where this mold has pressed and you'll see that it's pretty decent. And yeah, on this one, the devil is absolutely in the details. So that's going to make this just a tad trickier. But it's also going to be rewarding when we're done. I might add just a little bit of extra stuff through here as well just because that's how I do it but pretty much all I'm doing at this point is just following where the mold press is on these wings we're gonna lay down white first and then while the paint is still wet I'm gonna come back and do the upper half in that mint green just like you guys see so that is one side and we're going to flip it over and do the other side I want to try and stay as careful as we can while we're doing this did do some segments here so we're going to repeat that on this side I put in two more segments I'm hoping the camera's not bleeding out on this it's hard for me to check and see what's going on while I'm painting gonna bring this all the way down and connect dots here And now, with this still a little bit tacky and wet, we're going to come back in and do the top segments over with our mint green.
And we're just about done here. I think I have in my mind which eyes I'm going to use. I have to think about do I have eyes that are that small. I think these are four mil. Um, and generally with cicadas I found the eyes are either green or red. And I'm pretty sure I have the small enough portions for a green-red eye. And that goes all the way over on that side. And then without dipping any of this out, just kind of brush that and grab a little bit more white and I'm going to finish this side and bring that all the way back. And do the same down the other side. I think I can probably rest my hand here. It's probably a little bit easier. And then just kind of see if I can even that out a little bit. Can add probably a couple of these little segments in here just to kind of better match what's going on in the picture. and then meet that and then we'll do the same thing on the other side and we'll heat set it and we'll add some eyes in. So for this we're just gonna take a diagonal line here. It's a little bit too thick. I want that a little bit thinner. Make sure those segments connect. And there we go. I'm just going to add to the exterior of the wing segment a little dark line for guidance. And that should do it. I don't think I want to go buck wild on this. I could. But I think before I'd go buck wild, I'd want to know if it swims. We're going to bring in red and green eyes. I'm going to use both. I have them that are small enough. I think it'll look okay. Don't want to overdo it. Solid eyes would look pretty cool too, but I don't think I have any solid greens that are small enough. I'm certain that I don't. So this is going to be about the best I can get for this particular project. It's not really important where The pupil sits on this just as long as it sits in the eye socket and doesn't stick to my glove. This is where I'm always going to trouble folks. Always sticks to me. This one, let me get that eye in there up to my hand. Of course it is. It's too much glue. 
Um, I'm going to start adding eyes. Yeah, that's lost on my hand. Let's take this off. Let's start adding glue on with toothpicks, I think. Makes more sense than what I try to do here. I'm actually going to use the pupils in the up position. I think that works probably the best. There we go, folks. So we're almost there. We're almost done. I did that. Hey, you guys wanted to see this. This is the KBS formula. It's the new formula that they are releasing this week. It's actually already released. Um, I left you a Facebook post. I'll leave you some details below. There's a certain lot number that you guys need to ask for, but this has been sitting on my shelf since eh, mid-January, and it's been sitting like this on purpose. I left that much in because we just wanted to see now one thing i will say before we start um dipping this is going to kind of behave like the wiggle warts i'm going to need to pull this off this tail uh drip wire i'm going to need to pull that off in about 15 minutes but look at how beautiful there we go folks there we go look at those guys love my pups here we go you guys, thank you so much for watching today. I always appreciate the company. I hope I was able to teach you a couple of things, at least give you some creative ideas. This is the Cicada Popper. Thanks to Tim over at Crossroad Tackle. Awesome, awesome, awesome um, that he sent me some... Yeah, you know. <laughs> Rascal likes it too. You guys take care. Happy casting from me at Chuckle Bates.